Hey, you're 11. Welcome back to McGrathematics for some more red hot maths content. Let's kick off with a couple of HSC flashback questions. Pause the video and decide on A, B, C, or D for these two multiple choice questions. Okay, for the first one from 2014, uh, we need to solve for x. So we're going to rewrite this logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. So the way we do that is we have 2 to the power of 8 is equal to x minus 1. So we do that circular motion from previous videos. This to the this equals this. So once you go that far, the rest is pretty easy. 2 to the power of 8 is 256. So we've got x minus 1 equals 256. So we add 1 to both sides and we get x equals 257. So the answer is D. Okay, over on the right, we've got A is actually equal to e to the power of x. Which of these is equal to log base E of A squared? So the trick for this one is, of course, when you have a logarithm of something with a power, you can bring the power out the front of the expression. So we have 2 log base e of a. We're going to replace the a with e to the power of x. So we've got 2 log base e of e to the x. And now, of course, log base e and e to the power are inverse functions, and they're going to cancel each other out and leave us with just the x. So we end up with 2x, which is option C as the correct answer. Well done if you said D and C these two questions. Okay, today's lesson is on modeling exponential and logarithmic equations. So first thing we're going to look at is how we actually sketch logarithmic equations, which is something we haven't yet covered. So all you need to know is that uh, the curve of y equals log base e of x, so the logarithmic curve, is the exact same shape as y equals e to the x, so it's the exact same shape as an exponential, except it's reflected across the line y equals x. So we'll start off with our y equals e to the x shape in red, passing through one on the y-axis. And now the line y equals x is a 45 degree angle to the x-axis going straight down. Now we're just gonna reflect that red line straight across here to make this shape right here. So the red line is y equals e to the x and the blue line is y equals log base e to the x. So whenever I'm asked to sketch a logarithm, I just think, well, it's the exact same shape as an exponential but instead of coming off the x-axis going up to infinity, it's coming off the y-axis and moving to the right. So there's our shape for our logarithmic function. So all log functions will look like this. Um, if you change the base of your log function, it will change the steepness of this curve, but it'll still have this shape. It'll still pass through the same points or same uh, point on the x-axis, pardon me. So our domain is always gonna be from zero to infinity, not including zero. So the line x equals zero, or the y-axis, is an asymptote that we never cross. So we never have a value of zero and we never have a negative value, as we've already talked about with logarithms. Our range is, uh, in terms of verticality, we're going everywhere, so from minus infinity up to positive infinity. We have an x-intercept at one for any logarithm, regardless of the base, and an asymptote will always be at x equals zero. All right, let's look at sketching a few transformations of this function. So some common types of questions could be sketching y equals log base e ln of x minus 1. So think about for a second, do you remember what happens when we take a function and we change the input value, which is x, to an x minus 1? Do you remember where it moves? If you're saying to yourself, I know it moves one unit to the right, you are correct. So we're going to start with our logarithmic shape and we're going to move it one unit in the right direction. So now our x-intercept is 2 and our asymptote is now x equals 1 rather than the y-axis. So exact same shape, 1 unit to the right. If this was an x plus 1, we would have gone to the left. If the plus or minus 1 was outside of the logarithm, we would have gone up or down. Okay, for the second one, we're going to take our log base 2 shape, so like this, and we're going to multiply it by 2. So it's going to be stretched up by a factor of 2. So these red points are going to be twice as tall and these red points down here are gonna be twice as negative. So it's gonna look like we're just stretching this curve out by a factor of two. So two times as tall and two times as negative is how I kind of think about it. But the shape is still roughly the same and we're still passing through one on the x-axis. Now the last one, y equals log of one over x is a bit of a trick question. We're just gonna play with another way of writing one over x to make this a bit easier. So if we write this as um, ln of x to the power of 1, because remember 1 over x is x to the power of negative 1. We can pull that negative 1 out the front because it's a power, and so we have log of 1 over x is actually negative log x, 
which we have looked at um, a while ago, but it's hard to remember. So this makes sketching log of one over x really easy. We're just gonna take our log x shape and we're going to multiply it by negative one, which reflects it across the x axis. So it turns it upside down vertically. So there is negative log x, which is log of x to the minus one, which is log of one over x. So a bit of a trick question there. Okay, let's look at solving some equations that involve exponential or logarithmic functions to model things in the real life. So here we have the number of Instagram followers that Oliver has is represented by F for followers. Um, followers after N number of thirst trap posts. So F for followers, N for number of posts. First question is, what is his initial follower count before he posts any pics? So we're trying to find what the value of F is when the value of N, which is number of posts, is equal to zero. Okay, so we have at n equals zero, we're gonna have f equals 18 plus 12e to the 0 0.025 times zero is just gonna be zero. E to the power of zero is one, so we have 18 plus 12. So we have an initial count of 30 followers. So before any pics are posted, starting off with 30 followers. Next question asks, how many followers will we have after 20 posts? So in the last one, we were making n equal to zero. In this question, we're making n equal to 20. So we'll do it n equals 20, f equals 18 plus 12e to the 0 0.025 multiplied by 20. We'll put this through our calculator and we'll get an answer of approximately 38 followers. Okay, now the tough question. When he reaches 50 followers, Oliver decides that the fame is too much and deletes his account. After how many posts will this happen? So for this question, we are trying to find the value of n that is gonna give us a value of f being 50. So we're trying to solve for n when f is 50. So we're gonna make the left-hand side of the equation 50, and we're now going to solve for n, which is an exponential equation uh, like in the last video. So we'll start by subtracting 18 from both sides. Um, we'll swap the sides while we're here. So we have um, 12e to the 0.025n equals 50 minus 18. Now we'll divide by 12. And now we say to ourselves, all right, so we're trying to solve for n. We need to get this exponential term out of the power of the e. Hopefully you remember the way we do that is we take the natural logarithm, so log base e of both sides. So we're gonna do this next. Ln degenerates of both sides. Because log base e and e to the power are gonna cancel out and leave us with the power, which is 0.025n. Now to solve for n, all we need to do is divide both sides by 0.025. So our answer for n is gonna be ln, so log base e of 8 over 3 divided by 0 0.025. Guess that's an answer of approximately 39.23. So after 39 posts, we won't quite be there. So we'll have to round up to 40 posts for our answer. So after 40 posts, the follow account will go across 50, which means Ollie is too famous and he's going to delete his account. Okay, for our next one, we have a logarithmic equation. We have the loudness uh, of a sound measured in decibels with a noise intensity of i is given by the equation uh, loudness in decibels equals 10 times log base 10 of intensity divided by 10 to the power of negative 12. So a pretty scary looking equation. Uh, what's interesting here is that the loudness of a sound is a logarithmic scale. What this means is, um, for example, if you had a speaker that was playing some music and then you had a second speaker that was playing the exact same music at the exact same volume, it wouldn't actually sound twice as loud to your ears. If you wanted the music to be twice as loud, to have twice as many decibels, you would need to actually have 10 speakers all playing the same music. So yeah, it's interesting. So the first question is, normal conversation has an intensity around 10 to the power of negative six watts per square meter. So the loudness is how loud it sounds to our ears and I is the, um, is the energy intensity of the, of the sound. So calculate the decibel value. So the first question is asking us to substitute into this equation, the value of i being 10 to the power of minus six. So that's what we'll do. We'll take our equation. Top of the fraction is now 10 to the power of negative six. Now we could uh, just chuck this into our calculator, but that would be boring. So let's do some math. Let's simplify this fraction. We've got 10 to the negative six divided by 10 to the negative 12. When we're dividing two terms with the same base, we can subtract the powers. So negative six, take away negative 12, will be negative six plus 12, which is six. So in here we get 10 to the power of six. Now we can be even more clever and we can take the power of six out the front because we have a logarithm. 
So we can have six times 10 times log base 10 of 10. And now we're asking ourselves, what is log base 10 of 10? Well, when the base and the subject of the logarithm match, you can have an answer of one because 10 to the power of one is equal to 10. So this is it. So this is six times 10 times one. So we get an answer of 60 decibels. So when our, when our sound intensity is 10 to the power of negative six, for a normal conversation, the loudness is about 60 decibels. Okay, second question is a bit more challenging. A busy street is around 70 decibels. Calculate the corresponding sound intensity. So now we're gonna put the 70 on the left-hand side of the equation, and we're going to attempt to solve the equation for I. So left-hand side becomes 70. We can go ahead and divide both sides by 10. So we get seven on the left, and then we'll swap the sides. So we have log base 10 of I divided by 10 to the negative 12 is equal to seven. Now, like we did before, we're going to translate this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation. So we're gonna start with the base. So 10 to the power of seven is equal to our subject, which is I over this thingy. So we have 10 to the seven equals this. We can bring this 10 to the minus 12 up to the top of the fraction by making it a positive 12. So when you change the places of the, of the base, the power changes from negative to positive. So we get 10 to the power of seven equals I times 10 to the 12. Now we'll divide both sides by 10 to the power of 12 to get I by itself. And with this fraction here, we can divide both, sorry, we can divide top and bottom by 10 to the power of seven, leaving us with a one on the top and leaving us with a 10 to the power of five on the bottom. So there we go, a decibel value of 70. When we rearrange it and solve, it corresponds to an intensity of one over 10 to the power of five. Okay, sweet, for the last one, a bit of a challenging question. We have the population of Steph's ant colony after T weeks is given by P equals AE to the KT. So we have an equation here with a lot of letters, but they all stand for numbers. So P is how many ants in the colony, the population. A is a constant, which we're gonna figure out in part A. E is of course the magic number, 2.7. K is also a constant, which we're gonna figure out in part B. And T is number of weeks. So even though there are five letters here, they all represent actual numbers. So the initial ant population is 1,000. After two weeks, the population increased to 1,500. Find the value of A. So to answer this first question, we're gonna use the first bit of information that initially, so when time is equal to zero, the ant population P is equal to 1,000. So P is equal to 1,000 when T is equal to zero. So the left-hand side of the equation will be 1,000. The right-hand side will be a e to the k times zero. So we have e to the zero. Like from before, e to the zero is still just one. So this gives us a 1000 equals capital A. And then we have our value of A. So that number at the front is gonna be your initial value. So we can write that as a thousand now, 1000 e to the kt. Now we're going to solve for k and we're trying to get the answer of k equals one half ln of three over two. So to solve this, or to prove this, sorry, we're gonna use the second bit of information that after two weeks, the population increased to 1,500. So this tells us that when T is equal to two, because T is number of weeks, so when T is two, population P is equal to 1,500. So we're gonna take our equation, we're gonna make the left-hand side equal to 1,500, we're gonna make the T equal to two, and we're gonna try and solve this for k, we're gonna try and get k by itself and we should get this expression right here. Okay, so first things first, we'll divide both sides by 1000 to get e to the 2k by itself. So 1500 over 1000. Now we wanna get the k out of the power of the e, so we've gotta do the opposite of e to the power, which is ln, which stands for log base e. Now on the left-hand side, log, so ln of e to the power are gonna cancel out and leave us with 2k. On the right-hand side, we can simplify the inside of the logarithm as three over two. So we have 2k equals ln of three over two. Now we can divide both sides by two to get k by itself. So we get one half ln three over two, which is what we were trying to get. So we've done it correctly. So there's our exact answer. We can put this into our calculator and get a decimal, but for now we're gonna leave it like that and we'll use that if we need to later. Okay, question C, what will the population be after four weeks? So now we have our equation. We know what K is, we've got the value right there. So now we can actually use the equation. 
So we're finding the population after four weeks. So we're gonna make the value of T equal to four. So subbing that in, we've got P equals 1000, E to the four is T times by K. Now remember, we do actually know the value of K, it's this thing right here. Again, we could get a decimal if we needed to, but let's keep it nice and exact. So K is exactly a half log of three over two or 1.5. If we feed this through our calculator, we get an answer of exactly 2,250. So there is our population after four weeks. Okay, now the last question, after how many weeks will the population exceed 1 million? So now we're gonna set the left-hand side of the equation, P for population, we'll make that equal to 1 million. We're gonna try and solve the equation for T. So we're finding T when P equals 1 million. So we're setting it equal to a million and we're solving for T. Again, we do know what K is, it hasn't changed. It's always gonna be this value here. Okay, we'll divide both sides by a thousand. So when you divide a million by a thousand, you get a thousand. Now we'll take ln of both sides to get rid of the e to the power. So here's our ln to generous. On the left, we'll have kt, and on the right, we'll have log of 1,000. Now we've just got to divide by k, so we're dividing by this figure right here. Again, we put that through the Casio calculator, and we get an answer of around 32.07. So therefore, 32 weeks is not going to quite be enough because we want to be exceeding 1 million, so we're going to have to take 33 weeks to exceed a population of 1 million. Okay, there we go. Um, here's some practice questions if you'd like some more practice. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.